Fancy Photo is a great distortion effect called Displace. It's a really powerful tool that's really worth to check out and you can literally create millions of distortions with any image. Now I'm using an Adobe stock image. Of course you could use anything, maybe text, that's a great one to work with, or just gradients or anything. Now I'm not gonna go for this one, load map from layers beneath, but you can also bring in a file, load map from a file. But it's just as quick and easy just to use load map from layers beneath. There's also different offsets as well if you want to use those. There's also a scale to fit, but I'm gonna obviously use the same size image, so it doesn't matter, it's exactly the same size. But you can modify the strength, and you can see you can get that sort of distortion, sort of very Dali-like, sort of surrealist effect very quickly. Now the reason I went to actually use this displace filter, because I've been watching a brilliant Blu-ray called Dawson City by Bill Morrison, and it's absolutely superb, where you've got these old nitrate films, and these films have distorted because they've been stored away under, a, it was apparently an ice rink or swimming pool. And unfortunately, all these films have got some really weird distortions. And you can create very similar sort of designs using this displace filter, obviously with a bit of work. So click cancel. So let's just go right to the start. So what I normally do, just go here. I've got this background image. And then I can just go here to layer and I can duplicate it. Now I can always, of course, do this multiple times. So layer and duplicate. I close that so it will make certain it's not visible. And I'm going to work with the background. That's the key thing, the one, the layer beneath. And then you can go to here, filters. Now blur. And there's lots of different blurs. I was using Gaussian blur in the previous one. You can use that. But you maybe decide, you know what, let's use box blur. So instead of that you can use box blur instead. Creates an interesting blurring effect. And you can change the setting, maybe 300. Something like that. So you get a really intense blur. Click apply. Then go back here. Then of course you want to display it again. This is what I'm going to do backwards and forwards. Then you can go to filters, distort and displace. You can also do the same effect with some variation in the layer menu. There's a new live filter layer you can create as well. So displace. With that, you can then change the strength again. But at this point, nothing's been stored, so no change whatsoever. Then load map from layer beneath. And as soon as you do that, you can then see the effect. And you can see the distortion. That's fairly similar to the other one. You think, well, that's not much use if it's going to create much the same each and every time. No, that wouldn't be much use at all. But what you can do is you can always go again back there. And you can go to filters. Maybe go to distort and deform. So select that. And with this, you can go here. Add some pins. And you can distort this image. You can just drag and distort it. Now, make certain you're selecting the right one. <laughs> that was the underline layer. And that's the thing to be careful of. So make certain you do that. And you can see you've still got the image. Just about make it out. And I like to fill the entire thing. And then, of course, you can modify this as well, the master. You can, so you can make it less distortion if you don't want it full on. So maybe go with 82%. Click Apply. Then you go to Background, click there, and then go to Filters, Distort, and go down to Displace. And again, unfortunately, there's no automatic. It would be lovely if there was an option just to automatically do it. I don't know why they never added that. So load map from layers beneath, and they haven't really, they've only added this, I think. So that's, just drag that. And you can see again, you've got that distortion. So you can create different distortions by doing that. And another thing, of course, what you can do, apply it once, you can always apply it again. So go to filters, go to repeat displacement map. Now I don't know why it says displacement map when the filter itself is the displace. Makes no sense, but repeat displacement map, and you can see you can apply it again. And that will create even more distortion to that image using that background image here. It uses the exact same image. But also what you can do, you can go to layer and you can go to fade displacement map. So fade displacement map. And then you can see what happens. You can get this lovely sort of multiple copies there. And you can see, change it. You can go between, subtly do it. Again, this would be brilliant if you could capture this in a movie effect. That would be a lovely sort of subtle change. And also you've got blend modes. So you can run through there, maybe go with lighten. 
And you can see as you do that, you get a different result there. Click apply. And you can always go back to repeat displacement map and so on to create some truly weird distortions with this image. So let's just undo. So go back to that. And I'm just going to remove this background image, the one with the effects. So background, I can again go to layer and I can duplicate it. Now another one that I really like doing is creating a pattern design from this. So let's again select this, make sure it's not visible. Go to this layer. What you can then do is go to layer, new pattern layer from selection. And it's using this image. So new pattern layer from selection. And then you can then resize it. And this creates a really lovely effect of sort of square chunks in your image or whatever, because you can actually squeeze it like that. So you can create a rectangular design. Well, what you can then do is you can go here to background again, bring this on. Now, I'm not certain because the filter, let's just go and show you filters, again, distort and displace. It does say load map from layers, layers beneath. I've never found that anything other than the one that you've got is going to do anything. It just seems, it just ignores these other layers. So I don't understand why it says layers. Surely it should be load map from layer beneath. Maybe I'm wrong. Please let me know in the comments because it's quite possible. But I've never seen any particular effect from that. And then you can see you can modify this. Now you'll notice that I haven't clicked there yet. So makes sense. And that's why I would love to see an automatic effect. Don't know why it's not just automatic. It makes no sense why you have to click that because you probably do it every time the same. And there you can see now you've got your pattern design has created these blocks. So you create this nice, nice chunky block effect. You can cancel. So I'm canceling that again. You can go to the pattern again. Now with this pattern, it's live. <clears throat> so you can go here. You can drag it upwards. You can also rotate it. So maybe have a sort of diagonal effect. Again, go to the background, click there, make sure it's active again, make sure it's selected, then go to filters, again distort and displace. With that, the exact same. Make sure you click here, load map, and then you can see now you've got this diagonal effect applied to your distortions. And you can, of course, create all kinds of different ones with those patterns. You can, of course, modify the pattern as well. You can distort that as well. So another thing you can do, so I've got here, background, let's just delete the pattern now, and maybe just delete that one. So let's start again right at the beginning. So layer, and again, duplicate. I'm gonna go here, deselect that one again, and I can distort this design, and you can distort this design in many different ways. So filters, distort and deform. So you can just distort the image, and again, blur it. I think you can do the blur anytime. So you can just distort it like that. You've still got that image. And drag that down, apply. But also you can go to filters, distort, maybe apply another one. Or maybe go to blur and this time use zoom blur. And you can see now you've got this weird effect as it zooms outwards. Click apply. Then again, go back to your background, click there. Makes sure it's active, filters, distort, and again down to displace. Remember to click low map, and then you can see now what happens. It's got this just burst out from the center. Click apply. And you can, of course, apply it a couple of times again. So filters, repeat. Filters, repeat. Now, of course, it's always going to use that central position. If you change the position beforehand in the actual radial, you would actually be able to position it somewhere else. And then, of course, you can always go to layer, fade displacement map, and again, use this sort of effect just to create a combination between the two. Maybe go with light and maybe go with difference and so on to create some very odd. Now, I think it actually starts to create very painter-like effects when you use this. And of course, you can place again. So filters repeat and then go to layer. And again, you can fade displacement map and you can do the same. So again, go here, normal, uh, let's go down to difference. And you can see you can create all kinds of very unusual effects. Now, also what you can do, of course, once you've got this, you can always go to filters. You can always go to colors, auto level. You might find that the image 
yes, I think that looks a bit nicer than before. So you can create a sort of very butterfly-like effect. So let's just undo that again. Now you don't have to use the image. I've just been using the image, but it doesn't need to be the image. So again, I just remove this. Well, you can go for, now sometimes I found this doesn't seem to work, and I don't know why, but I'm just gonna do it now in this, and I might get it to work, maybe not. So just gonna create a let, just a single letter. You could create, of course, a whole lot of text, maybe like A. Now I'm gonna blur it, because if you don't blur it, let's say it creates a very sharp edge. I don't like that, this, that effect. So filters, and this time I'm gonna go blur and Gaussian blur. I could use some of the others, of course. Now I don't wanna blur it too much, 200's maybe a bit too much, about 50, something like that. You can still see the letter A. So you've got there, you just click apply. Make certain it's behind, because it, it's not, it's not gonna work. Now you could, of course, use the displacement, this image, so pixel, then just go to filters, go to distort and displace. You can use that. Load map, it's, a, it's just a layer beneath, doesn't have to be. So you can just select that, and then you can see then the letter A is distorted by that image. Now because of the shot, you can see it's slightly sharp. I'm not for, never too keen on that. Click cancel. But this time you can just drag it down. So it's below, then go to background, and then go to filters again distort and displace and then you can go here and you can modify the strength okay remember load and then see what i mean now sometimes it works i've gone through this about 10 15 times when i've been running through tutorials and loading that a as a pixel layer beneath will work then it doesn't there's no particular logic, I don't think. Please put in the comments below if you know a reason why that does, does not work sometimes. Sometimes I say it works, other times it doesn't, but it should work. So remove that and delete. So again, you can do anything, but I think the best one is, of course, just using an image or maybe a different image. You can always load up other images. So if you've got, say, like an you know, image like this, haven't saved this, so to actually use it, you need to save it. I'm gonna use, well, I could actually just select this pixel. Let's just select that. Control C, edit and copy. Go to Adobe Stock, and then I can paste it in. So let's edit and paste. Of course, it's not the same size, never is. But let's just resize that. So you've got this lovely paint effect. This was actually created using much the same principle with all of the various displacements and distortions. Obviously applied multiple times, using itself and applied again and again. So again, pixel, just drag below there. So it's below it. Again, background, filters, go to distort, and then down to displace. And again, load map from layers beneath, and then apply. And you can see the result of that image being applied as a distortion. You can create some truly weird and wonderful sort of, scr well, very painter-like effects, all splattered all over the place. Then of course, go there, put that one there. I want that to be the background. So you've got that, go to the background again. Obviously the naming convention is not so convenient. What you can then do is go to layer, whoops, I mean filters, distort, and displace. And again, do exactly the same. Go with strength, load maps from layers beneath, and you can see that distortion effect applied to that image like that. And again, you can change the strength backwards and forwards, either minus or positive. And you can see the result of that. Again, this creates a bit of noise. So you can see the noise effect. That's why quite often I like to just go there, let's just go here and just maybe apply a blur. So filters, go down to blur, and oh, let's go for radial blur this time. So radial blur, you got that effect, maybe that's a bit too extreme, let's just blur it just slightly, oh, fine. And you can also, of course, reposition it. So you might decide, you know what, that's a more interesting position for your blur around that sort of, that way. Click apply, again go to background, put that on, then go to filters, and down to distort, and displace. And again, exactly the same, low maps from the beneath, 
And you can see then you've got your radial effect. But this time as a distortion, not obviously as a radial blur. But it does, I think, make it smoother. Click apply. And then, of course, you can go to filters, repeat. And you can see then you've got a distortion going around again. Filters, repeat, distortion, etc. I hope you found this tutorial of interest. Any questions, please let me know in the comments below. A like or dislike, always appreciated. Thank you much. Bye.